What's up guys, my name's Brandon and I've already shown you guys a ton of new features here in iOS 13, but after using the software for over a week now, I've discovered even more awesome and hidden features in the OS. So in this video, I'm gonna be showing you more than 30 more iOS 13 features that Apple did not talk about at the keynote. And we have a lot to cover, so we're not gonna waste any time in this video. So let's go ahead and get into more than 30 more iOS 13 features that Apple didn't talk about. And the first one has to do with Safari and phone numbers for businesses like Apple or Verizon or Best Buy. Apple will actually now let you know if a number is verified for customer support. So you can see here, I have a phone number Number for Apple customer support when I go and click on it take a look at this it pops up regular at first and then it shows it's actually a verified phone number and I can also message using the chatbot here built into iOS 13 and just as another example you can see here we have the Verizon phone number if we go ahead and tap on that and I guess this is a new pop-up here as well so we'll just allow call and you can see it does pull up the Verizon logo right there it says it's verified we can message and we can also call so this is a great feature to have to make sure that you are calling the right phone number now the next feature is inside of our settings if we go to settings and Wi-Fi you will see that we now have a new section called known networks and this is going to show all of the networks that you've previously connected to and of course if we compare that to iOS 12 you could see it basically just shows all of the networks down here and it does not individualize the ones that are known. We just have to kind of remember if it's known or not and click on it and then it auto connects. But in iOS 13, it lets us know that it's known so we can easily click on that and then connect to it. Now you'll also notice down at the bottom, we have auto join hotspot. And then if we go into our cellular settings and then go into data options right here, you'll see we have a new option called low data mode. And this actually turns on automatically when connecting to an iPhone using a personal hotspot. So if I connected to like another device that has a SIM card in it, like my iPhone XS Max, right once I connect to that hotspot, low data mode will turn on. The next feature is inside of the all new Maps application, which I absolutely love in iOS 13, by the way. But this new feature is gonna allow you to automatically share your ETA when you have favorites. So for example, I have a favorite right here, and you can see when I start the navigation, you can see down there we have share ETA. And when I click on that, it will actually show that I can share my ETA with certain people, certain contacts. So I'm just gonna click on the B right there and it will do that animation and it shows I'm sharing my ETA with one person. And once you add in a location right there, down at the very bottom, you can see there's a share ETA option and that's where you can add a specific contact. And then also here in the Maps application, you can see we have recent searches right here and this isn't anything new, but the clear option right here is new. So if you search for a lot of things and you want that to be cleared, just step, simply tap on clear and you can see it clears all of your search history. Another awesome hidden feature here in iOS 13 is the fact that you can actually ask Siri via text straight from within the spot light search. So if I said, what is nine plus 10, it should say 21. I'm just kidding. When I ask Siri down here, press that, you can see it does ask Siri right there and we get our answer right there. And the awesome thing about this is you can do this with anything. So if you had like, you know, you wanted to turn your lights on or something like that, you could ask it to do that. If you have it set up in HomeKit, you could do anything because that is now an option down here to ask Siri. Now inside of the all new share sheet in iOS 13, you can see we have an airdrop little icon right there. And now it actually shows how many devices we can airdrop to. And if we compare that to iOS 12 over here on the left, you can see we do not have an airdrop icon or any kind of number there showing how many devices we can airdrop to. So it is a small change, but for somebody that uses airdrop a lot like myself, I do like that little addition right there. Inside of the clock application, if you go over to timer and you start a timer, it will actually show when that timer will go off, the time that the timer will go off. So I set it for 15 minutes, 15 minutes from now, 344 will be 359. Now, another really cool feature that has to do with the phone and cell here in iOS 13 is the ability to silence unknown callers. So you can see that we have a toggle and this is gonna allow us to completely silence robocalls and spam calls. You know, you guys always probably get those spam calls from unknown numbers and it's just like a scam. You can now silence those so it won't even ring or vibrate on your phone. And then you can see we do also have the blocked contacts option right there. So definitely a nice step in the right direction for Apple with iOS 13, preventing spam calls. So now inside of our significant locations, it actually shows the My Places tab. So if you go into our privacy, 
go to location services, system services, and then go down to significant locations. You can see we now have a section called my places, and this will show how many times and when you went to your specific saved places. And you do also have the history right there and you can clear the history as well. So as you guys know, you can now connect PS4 and Xbox One S controllers to the iPhone and the iPad and iOS 13. I did make a video on that. If you missed it, it's up in the cards right now. But what you may not have known is that if you actually have the battery toggle right here, the battery with widget rather, you can actually see the battery percentage of that controller. So you can see mine is fully charged at 100%, but it will keep tabs on the battery percentage, which is really great, especially if you're playing on the iPad. Because for some reason for me, the iPad does actually drain a lot of battery on both the controller and the iPad. But it's cool now that you can see that straight from within the widgets in iOS 13. So if we go into the App Store and find our Updates tab, which is when we click on our profile picture right there, we scroll down, this shows our updates right here. I'm not personally a fan of that, but one thing I am a fan of is the fact that you can actually delete applications straight from within the updates tab. And I really like this because for the longest time, I would always get updates for applications that I quite frankly forgot that I even had installed. So the ability to delete the application straight from here is really nice. So now inside of reminders, you can see that we do have subtasks or sub reminders here in the application. So if you make a new reminder like this right here, if we go ahead and click on the I right here, scroll all the way down to the bottom, you will see subtasks. If we go ahead and click on that, you can see we can add a reminder as a subtask to that main reminder. So you can see there, it's kind of just like a hierarchy of reminders, which is really cool. And it's definitely catching up. It's definitely making Apple catch up to some of the competitors who have really great reminders applications like things and there's multiple other applications out there that do it better still than apple and ios 13 but still this is a nice step in the right direction definitely makes the reminders app a little bit more robust than it was in the past and then also here in the reminders app you can see you get a new option called remind me when messaging and it says selecting this option will show the reminder notification when chatting with a specific person in imessage and if you do that you can actually choose a person so this is really cool if you maybe need to tell somebody to pick up something from the grocery store, if there's just something that you need to remind a specific person, this would be a great option to toggle on. So if you go back into Safari, if you see the scroll bar over here on the right hand side, you can actually long press on that or 3D touch on that and you'll get haptic feedback and that invokes this new gesture here, which is a scroll bar and allows you to go up and down a page very quickly. And the cool thing about this is that it works in all applications. So if you went to something like, let's just say Reddit, which has you know a long homepage or subreddit, whatever you're on, go ahead and pull over on this. You can see we can go up and down the feed, the homepage very, very quickly, much more effective than sitting there and scrolling and scrolling and scrolling forever. So it's really nice that you can just press on that and go ahead and get that scroll bar there. And I do also love the addition of the haptic feedback that you get. Also inside of Safari is a really cool feature. This is a screenshot from my iPad that I took on the day of release of iOS 13. I just never got around to touching on it, but you can see here it says automatically close tabs. So it says Safari can automatically close tabs that have not been viewed recently. You can change this later in settings and it shows after one day, after one week, after one month, or don't close automatically. And like I said, we can change this in settings. So if we go to our settings and go down to Safari and then scroll down to close tabs, you can see I have mine set to manually, but you can change that to after one day, one week, or one month. And this is gonna be great if you keep a lot of tabs open all the time, which I am completely notorious for. I keep a ton of tabs open, like 50 plus. So I am definitely going to be using this feature here in iOS 13. And I just think it is a great addition to keep your Safari tabs organized. And then one more final thing inside of Safari, if you go ahead and tap and hold on the bookmarks icon down here, you can see we get a new option to add bookmarks for all currently open tabs. And if we click on that, it will add all four of the current tabs to our bookmarks. So that's pretty cool because in the past, we were only able to set the specific website that we are currently on as a bookmark or a favorite. All right, so the next feature occurs inside of the music application. And I actually just discovered this one. So you can see the up next here, which is basically like the queue inside of the music application. Take a look at this. So I have the same three songs in the up next for both, but let me show you how these differ in iOS 13. So let's just say we're playing a song right now. And if we go to next, it's gonna go to our up next song, right? But if we go back, and we wanna to listen to that song again, but then go back to our Up Next, you can see here that iOS 13 actually keeps the original Up Next song still in the queue, whereas in iOS 12, it would basically skip that song. So you could only play the song that was Up Next one time and it wouldn't stay in there. But now in iOS 13, if you go forward and backwards, it still keeps those same songs in there. Whereas in iOS 13, you can see it's definitely not doing that. It's picking a new song like every time. So that's definitely an awesome feature here in iOS 13, especially for all of you Apple Music subscribers out there. 
there. This is definitely a feature you are going to love. Now, speaking of cool features inside of the music application, you guys know the new lyrics UI, which is really cool. You just tap on this button right here and it shows the lyrics. But if you actually click on specific lyrics, if you scroll all the way down and tap on it, it will actually skip to that part in the song and play those lyrics. So if you saw a line that you like really related to in a song that you maybe hadn't heard before, you can kind of just skip to that part in the song by clicking on the actual lyric, which is really cool. Very intuitive feature here built into iOS 13. And then also if we try to add the same song to a playlist that it's already in, so say for instance, we want to add this to the playlist that it's already in, you can see it says this song is already in your playlist, where in iOS 13 or iOS 12 rather, it would actually add the same song to your playlist multiple times. And that was really annoying because I have a lot of songs in some of these playlists and I didn't know if I had that song or not. So it would have been nice to have this little feature here built in, but luckily that is now in iOS 13. Another cool feature here in iOS 13 is if we go to the control center and 3D touch or haptic press on the platter right here that has our Wi-Fi and our Bluetooth. For some reason, that's not working. Look at this, this is a bug in iOS 13. There we go, finally. It was giving me haptic feedback, but it wasn't opening up the menu here. So also if we go into here in haptic touch or haptic press on the Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, you can see we can now show all of our connections that we can possibly connect to. We can go to our Wi-Fi settings, we could do the same for Bluetooth here. You can see that and we can go to Bluetooth settings as well. So that's a nice feature that we can now go ahead and 3D touch or haptic touch on Wi-Fi or Bluetooth to actually connect to a different network or a different device without having to go into settings. Now, speaking of the control center, we do have a new UI and also a new animation for the QR reader. So if we go ahead and launch that, you can see this is the new UI right there. And if we go ahead and scan a QR code, you can see that's the new animation. And we have this right here. We can search web or copy, and it shows exactly what is in that QR code. So now in iOS 13, when we go ahead and choose a device to stream media from, it's now sorted into categories. So you can see now it shows speakers and TVs, and it shows the HomePod right there, instead of just showing it as another option to connect to via AirPlay. So now on the keyboard in iOS 13, we have our Memoji stickers here on the left of the emoji. So when we go to our emojis, you will always see your Memoji stickers there if you do have them enabled. And if we 3D touch or haptic touch on the camera application, you can see we have a new setting there for take portrait selfie. And that replaces the scan QR code option here in iOS 12. You can see there we now have take portrait selfie, which is definitely a lot more useful because you can scan QR from the control center. So now inside of our notes application, if we go to the add people to it, you can see we do now have an option for share options right here. So you can add people, you could do this in iOS 12, but now we have a new option for share options right here. And you can see we can have permissions to can make changes or just make it view only. And if we go ahead over into the files application, you can see we do now have an option to scan documents straight from within the files application by simply tapping on those three dots right there. We can scan documents straight from within here instead of having to go into notes. And another cool feature here inside of the new files application is that you can actually zip and unzip files by simply 3D touching or long pressing on the actual folder. You can see there we can compress and we can also uncompress. We can unzip those files if we want to. We can never do that in the past. So if we go into our mail application, we do now have some new options inside of mail. So if we're in an email, we go ahead and click on this little arrow down here at the bottom right. You can see we do now have some new options right here. We have mute and then the other new one is send again. So we didn't have those two options in iOS 12, but now we can do that here in iOS 13. And I definitely like the mute option right there. And that's just going to basically disable any kind of notification you would get from this specific sender. So now if we go into our settings accessibility and go down to face ID and attention, you can see we do now have a new option for haptic on successful authentication. And as you can read there, it just says that it will play a haptic when face ID successfully unlocks the iPhone, authorizes Apple Pay or verifies iTunes and App Store purchases. So I think that's a really cool feature. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that on because I do actually enjoy feeling that haptic feedback on the iPhone. So I think that's a really cool feature here in iOS 13. And then the final feature is also inside of settings. If we go to our settings display and brightness, and then all the way down to view, the display zoom now has new animations and basically shows you a much better idea as to how each of these two layouts are gonna look. So standard and zoomed, it gives you a nice little animation there of how they're both going to act, which makes it a lot easier to understand than in iOS 12. So there you have it guys. Those are 30 plus more new hidden features here in iOS 13. I hope you guys 
guys did enjoy the video. Hope you learned at least one new feature from watching this video. If you did, make sure to hit that thumbs up button. Of course, make sure you guys do subscribe. I will be covering iOS 13 throughout its entire beta stage. We should be getting developer beta 2 next week. And of course, I will be covering that here on the channel. I should be one of the first people with a video up on that. So definitely make sure you do have that bell icon ticked. And if you guys have any other new features or changes that I didn't cover, let me know about them down in the comment section below. I'm sure there are plenty of others out there that I have not even discovered yet. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching the video and I'll see you soon.